Hello everyone, this is Prophetess Straker and I am coming live for our midday prayer. I'm gonna give you guys a moment um, for those of you who are on uh, the notification. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to chime in. I know it's 11.55, I'm trying to work things out. Oh, excuse me, let me breathe. Okay, so the Lord has been so amazing to me. Um, as the days go past, I'm going to get extremely busy around this time. So I'm not certain how noon would work. I'm hoping that it will work out. So I'm hoping that I can just choose noonday um, for at least the remaining of January. Okay, so I just wanted to, um, to come in and I'm going to do things just a little bit differently today because there's something that's on my heart and I want to share it with you. Okay, so it's the book of Psalms, um, Psalm chapter 142. I'll begin at verse one. It says here, I cried aloud to the Lord. I pled aloud to the Lord for mercy. I poured out my complaint before him. I revealed my trouble to him. Although my spirit is weak within me, you know my way. Along this path I travel they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see. No one stands up for me. There is no refuge for me. No one cares about me. I cry to you, Lord. I say, you are my shelter, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am very weak. Rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Free me from my prison so that I can praise your name. The righteous will gather around me because you deal generously with me. I just want to share with you that David penned that song when he was actually in the cave. Okay, I'm reading this out the Bible. I'm not going to take credit for this. I'm going to tell you what the commentator said. Um, it says here um, that Psalm 142 may be understood as a psalm that teaches or gives insight into practical living. This psalm is associated with a specific instance when David was in the cave, referring to the time when David was being pursued by Saul and hid in, a, in the cave at, at Adullam um, or at En Gedi. The psalm models a way to pray, listen, through overwhelming feelings of isolation, and vulnerability. I'm going to say that again. This particular psalm models a way to pray through overwhelming feelings of isolation and vulnerability. Although most people have experienced the sense of being all alone with no one to notice or to care about their sorry, to care about their troubles, hope is available only to those who recognize that the Lord knows both what they are going through and what the outcome will be. Significantly, the psalm acknowledges that he could not, in his own wisdom or strength, escape from his circumstances. Can I repeat that? He could not, in his own wisdom or strength, escape from his circumstances. Rather than relying on himself, don't rely on yourself, or giving up, don't give up, or denying that this situation was dire. He put his experience into words and took his complaint directly to the Lord. He put his experience into words and took his complaint directly to the Lord. Do you hear that? In the song, before speaking to the Lord, David reiterates this four times. He cries out to the Lord, to the Lord, before him, to him. So he cries out to the Lord. So what is that saying? Basically on today, I want to pray for those who feel like you are hard pressed on every side. I want to pray for those who feel like your back is up against the wall. I want to pray for those who feel like the cares of this life, the cares of ministry, the cares of being a mother, the cares of being a father, the cares of being a wife, the cares of being a husband has pushed you into a cave. You're in a place where you're around people, but yet you feel all alone. You're in a place where you feel that you're doing everything that you can do. You're doing what God has called you to do, 
but yet you feel like nobody really understands. You are the guys that I'm targeting on today. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to feel like you're in a cave, to feel like you're all by yourself. I know what it feels like to feel like nobody cares, like nobody's interested. I know what it feels like to feel like there's nobody there that's going to speak up for you and who's going to come to your defense, who's going to come to your aid. You know, and for those of us, you know, especially in ministry where your life, like you're a public servant, for real, like you're a public servant, you understand? Um, you know, in ministry, it, it's not something that you do, those who are called by God. It is who you are. You understand? So you don't get to take your title off because you got your own challenges. You don't get to take your title off because life is not dealing you the best hand. You still must walk in the purpose that God created for your life. So I never get to sit down my title as a prophetess. I didn't get to, get to sit it down as an intercessor. I don't get it, get to sit, sit it down. I did not get to sit it down as an evangelist and I don't get to sit it down as an intercessor or as a prayer warrior. I'm not allowed to really come off my posts. It's who I am, you understand? And so a lot of times because you give and give and give, you feel like, Who's there to actually give for you? Who's praying for you? Who's concerned about you? You are the ones that I'm targeting on today. The Bible says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Since I've started these posts, you know, people are saying, oh, you look so happy. You're just smiling. And, you know, there are other posts that are being recorded um, from, um, from my business. And people are saying, oh, you look so happy and you look so positive and things of that nature. You know, I'm not, it's not like, <laughs> Lord God, you know, it's not like that all the time, but you still have to put your best foot forward. Everything is not going right in my life. Everything is not going the way that I planned, that's for certain. Um, and I don't have everything, you know, um, in the perfect situation or circumstance that I would like for things to be in. But one thing I've resolved is that where I am right now is where God wants me. And so I have the ability to smile because I know that God is with me. I know that he won't forsake me. You understand? And if he won't forsake me, he won't forsake you. And so for those of you who feel the pressure of life, this prayer is for you. Amen. Father, we honor and magnify your name. We glorify you. We exalt you, Lord, because you are God. You are most holy. You are the rock of ages. You are the ancient of days. You are the voice, hallelujah, of thunder. You are the will in the middle of the will. You're the bright and morning star. You are our portion. You're the lover of our soul. You're the lifter of our head. You're the mender of our wounds. You're the propitiation for our sins. You're our battle axe. You're our shelter. Hiya. And we bless your name. Thank you, Lord. You're our hiding place. You're our safety net. You're our leaning post, Lord. When we can't lean on anybody else, we can lean on you. When it seems like we're going to fall, Father, you're there to catch us and to hold us and to undergird us. And for that, we give your name the glory. You are a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You told us according to your word that we are the apple of your eye. You're the kind of God you don't sleep, neither do you slumber, but you're always watching over us. The Bible tells us that you're like a hen brooding over her chicks. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you. Thank you, Father, that you are our divine protection. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our defense and you are our shield. We thank you, Father, that you go before us and you stand behind us. We thank you, Father, because we understand understand that it does not yet appear what we shall be like, but we know God that when we see you, we shall be like you. We thank you, Father, because we realize that the enemy has painted a picture for us, and that picture doesn't look anything like what you have shown us. Uh, and so, Father, I pray for those, God, who have been chased into the cave uh, uh, because of the enemy of their soul, because of the naysayers, because of the haters, because of the cares of life, uh, because of the trials and the tribulation they have been chased into a corner, Lord God. I pray for them now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will send the raven even as you sent the raven
even to Elijah, that you would feed them right where they are. I declare in the name of Jesus that the gates of hell will not prevail against them. I deafen their ears to everything that's not like you. And I declare that you said according to your word that your sheep know your voice and a stranger they will not obey. I declare, God, that they will not be moved by what the enemy is saying. I declare, God, that they will be focused steadfastly on you in the name of Jesus. Ah, lift up, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord, and he's strong and mighty. He's mighty in battle. He is the King of glory. We thank you, Father, because you are the Lord of hosts, and I. We thank you, God, because you are the Lord of war. We thank you, Lord, because not only did you die for us, but you yet fight for us. Even now, we thank you, Lord, because we understand that Satan has got to come to you and get permission uh, even to affect our lives. God, we thank you uh, because we realize, God, that you have set his parameters. We realize, God, uh, that he cannot go past the heads that you have set for us. Thank you, Father, because you are our shelter. Uh, I thank you, Father, for encouraging your people. Uh, I ask God in the name of Jesus that you will let them know that they can make it. Uh, let them know, God, that they are not alone. Uh, let them know, God, that you will never leave them, neither will you forsake them. Uh, let them know that even now you are there in the midst of the storm. Uh, let them know, God, that you are touched by the feeling of their infirmity. Uh, let them know, Father, that every tear that they cry, God, is bottled up and you place it on the shelf uh, because you told us, God, according to your word, uh, that they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Uh, let them know, God, that the darkest hour is just before the breaking of day. Uh, God, I thank you because I understand uh, that some were really expecting that because we went over into a new year, uh, some were really expecting that the attack was going to stop, uh, that the depression was going to stop. That the oppression was going to stop, God. That the battle was going to stop. Hallelujah. But I understand, Father, that we're in different times and we're in different seasons. And so for some, God, they're still in the midst of the storm. For some, God, they're still in the midst of the battle. Even though we crossed over into 2020. And so, Father, I pray for them now in the name of Jesus. That you would give them a second win. That you would cause them, God, to fight rather than switch. That you would cause them to press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you would cause them to push beyond their circumstances, to push beyond what they're thinking, and to push beyond what they're feeling. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that everyone that's listening will come to understand that there is power in prayer. For you said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways and pray, you said, God, that you would hear from heaven uh, and that you would heal the land. Uh, and so, Father Nishe Monasekai, uh, I bless and magnify your name. Uh, and I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, that your people would come to understand that they're living beneath their privileges uh, because they refuse to pray. Uh, oh, God, that the battle is taking longer uh, uh, because they're refusing to pray. Uh, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, that they would take from Psalm 142 uh, and they would understand how David took all of his issues to you. Uh, he took all of his complaints to you. Uh, he took his fears to you. Hey, uh, he took his enemies to you. Uh, understand God that you are the power uh, and that you are able to deliver him. Uh, but he cried out, I cried unto the Lord uh, and God delivered me out of all of my troubles. Uh, if you need God to deliver you out of all of your troubles, uh, I'm here to tell you that all you've got to do is cry. Uh, why sit ye here and die? Uh, why sit quiet? Uh, why tell your friends and I, I uh, when your friends can do absolutely nothing. Uh, you got to open up your mouth and you got to cry out to the Father. Uh, and you got to let him know that you need him. And, I, uh, and that you need him right now. And I, uh, you got to say, Father, uh, if you don't come and see about me right now, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you got to throw out a SOS. Uh, you got to throw out a 911. Uh, you got to call on him. And I, uh, but the Bible declares that his ears are open until the righteous cry. Uh, he won't forsake you. Uh, he won't ignore you. My he won't hit the mute button but he longs to hear 
everything that concerns you uh, because it concerns him and so father we thank you for them uh, we thank you father for those that even the tears are falling down their face right now because they're saying God you know you know you know uh, you know where I am you know you know you know uh, you know I'm trying God you know you know you know uh, you know I'm tired you know God and sin was I formed and shaped in iniquity uh, you know God that I cannot do this on my own you know uh, uh, God that they set traps for me because you understand uh, that the enemy he set traps for me he wants to trip me up uh, because you said God according to your word that we're counted as sheep to the slaughter all the day long uh, but I thank you Lord God for being their provision uh, I thank you for ordering their steps I thank you God for causing them to overt the plan of the enemy uh, I thank you Father for maneuvering them Lord God uh, over every landmine in the name of Jesus I thank you Lord God uh, for causing them to overt every obstacle in Jesus name uh, I thank you Father for causing their feet to be like hind feet. Uh, cause them to leap God name on I, uh, over every hurdle that's placed in their path in the name of Jesus. Uh, and Father, I pray, my, uh, that the joy of the Lord would be their strength in Jesus name. Uh, I pray, God, name on the that they would lean into you, may I, uh, knowing God, that if God be for me, uh, he's greater than those that are against me. Thank you, Lord God. Uh, for you told us, God, according to your word, that a thousand may fall at my side uh, and ten thousand at my right hand but they cannot come nigh me. Uh, and God, we thank you, honey. Uh, thank you for the protection of the blood. Uh, thank you that the blood makes war. Uh, thank you that the blood is a hedge. Uh, thank you, Father, men, I say, uh, that the blood in I, uh, it is a shield. The blood in oh my, uh, it makes intercession. The blood, I say, uh, it cries out from the grave and we bless you for it. Uh, thank you, Lord God. Uh, it's in Jesus' name that we pray and we call it done by faith. Amen. Ooh, amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I pray that you are encouraged by this midday prayer. Listen, I'm in my office. I have no idea who's in the lobby room. Lobby, hallelujah. But it's a good thing that I own the building. <laughs> so at least this space anyway. And so that way I can use it as I see fit. And so I pray that you were blessed by the prayer. Listen, pray for me. Hallelujah. Ah, thank you, Lord God. Know that God loves you. He will not fail you. That things are not as bad as they seem. You've got to know that life is worth living. Your family is worth fighting for. Your marriage is worth fighting for. Your children are worth fighting for. Thank you, Lord God. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Because the darkest hour is just before the breaking of day. For some, you may say, it feels like the fire has been turned up a little bit hotter. And that's true. Hallelujah. Because the enemy wants to stop you because he realizes the Bible says that he is the prince and the power of this air. And so because he's the prince and the power of this hair, this air, he has a certain level of knowledge. He has a certain level of insight. Hallelujah. He can see where you are in, 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 in respect to your blessings. He can see that you're on the brink. Hallelujah. He can see. And so he turns the fire up hotter because he understands that if he could get you to move while you're at the door, while you're at the threshold, if he can get you to move, then you're going to have to go through this season all over again. So thank you father here and I so so stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord don't be swayed to the right not to the left thank you Lord God my soul just bless and magnify your name father I thank you for your presence that's here I thank you for your power I thank you for your deliverance I thank you father for even how you're touching the hearts and the minds of your people right now I thank you Lord God because I know that you're channeling this anointing through this feed I know that they feel your presence I know man and I say that they feel your comfort and for you that are contemplating suicide I cast it down now in the name of Jesus and I declare hallelujah that life is worth living no weapon formed against you shall prosper and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you I speak to your dead bones and I declare that you shall live and you shall not die and you shall fulfill the will of God for your life in the name of Jesus hallelujah for there is power in the name of Jesus and we give him praise hallelujah Thank you, Lord God. Listen, you guys, pray for me. Hallelujah. If you've been blessed by this feed, please share it. Um, please follow the page. Please sign up for the notifications. Please like the page. Hallelujah. And pray for me that I will forever be the woman of God that God has called me to be. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and grant you peace is my prayer. Amen. <sighs>